Okay, this video is going to go with the example from the notes um, that states that you borrow $12,000 at 8.5% for 90 days. So $12,000 um, at 8.5% for 90 days. And the key word here is that it says non-interest bearing. All right, and now as soon as you see this, this means that it's different from what we did in the previous unit or previous chapter. This means that we are going to be finding the bank discount and taking that away from this $12,000 so that you get less initially, but that you pay back $12,000. So the questions that go along with this, A says, what is the maturity value? Now in a non-interest bearing loan, the maturity value is the face value okay so for the maturity value that equals twelve thousand dollars which is different from what we did before in an interest bearing loan it was your face value plus your interest this time it's your um, it's basically what you're asking for all right so then part B says what is your bank's discount so for part B this is where it gets a little complicated um, because it's, it seems like it's different, but it's actually not any different. In the previous chapter, we had interest equals principal times rate times time. Now, in this non-interest bearing situation, we're going to use basically the same equation. We just have different names for those pieces. So instead of interest, we call it the bank discount. Principal is the maturity value. The rate is the bank discount rate, but we're still going to abbreviate it with R, and time is still time. Okay, so then what we would do here for this example is we put in our maturity value, which is again the $12,000 because that's what we're going to pay back to the bank. Remember, we don't get all that $12,000 initially, times the rate, 8.5%, so 0 0.085, times time, which in this case is 90 days out of and we should always assume 360 unless it says exact um, interest uh, we would always write 360 now when we multiply all this out do our division here if you want you can put parentheses around this your bank discount comes out to be two hundred fifty five dollars now part C says what is the amount of your proceeds so proceeds is what you take home initially. So your proceeds is your maturity value minus your bank discount. So in this case, what we have is our proceeds is equaling our maturity value, 12,000, minus $255. Which comes out to be eleven thousand seven hundred forty five dollars this is the amount that you would take home you go into the bank you say I want a nine interest bearing loan they're so sure these are the terms you say you want twelve thousand dollars they're gonna give you eleven thousand seven hundred forty five what you'll pay back to them is the twelve thousand now D is a little confusing but the effective rate the D says what's the effective rate to the nearest hundredth percent the way that you figure out the effective rate or what the effective rate is, is it is an equivalency rate to what this would be if it was an interest bearing loan. So it's it's basically saying um, this is what it would be if it was a normal loan, but because it's a special loan, you're getting you're paying a different rate than what it actually says. Because believe it or not, two hundred and fifty five dollars is not eight and a half percent over ninety days of twelve thousand like we've been doing for interest bearing. So the effective rate is basically a pretty straightforward equation, but it's your interest divided by your proceeds, and I always write PRO because we have a P for principal, times our time. Now this, this equation can get a little complicated, so we need to make sure we put parentheses in here, and then that you use parentheses on your calculator as well. So what our effective rate will look like as far as the work is 255, which is our interest, 
divided by 11,745 times our time again, which is 90 days out of 360. So I'm going to put that in parentheses because what we have going on here is we actually have some division, some multiplication, some more division. And so if I'm typing this into my calculator, I'm going to write, I'll, I'll kind of show you how I write it out and then you can type it in there, but I'm going to do 255 and then I'm going to put the division sign and then I'm going to put a parentheses button and I'm going to do another parentheses button that is this is your your kind of open parentheses button so I'm going to actually end up doing is putting this whole bottom part portion in parentheses then I'll type in my number 11,745 my times button then I'll do the 90 and I'm running out of space here divided by 360 I'm going to carry it down here and then I'm going to close the parentheses and close the parentheses again now if I do that um, as it's supposed to be I'll get an effective rate that will come out to be something that is slightly higher than what it sh what it was stated remember it was stated at eight and a half percent my effective rate in this case comes out to point zero eight six eight four five four blah 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 so remember we go to the nearest hundredth percent so I'll go over one two so that's eight point six eight hundredth percent is here four comes after it so my effective rate is eight point six eight percent now if you don't have the um, buttons on your calculator for this here's my recommendation all right do this kind of work your way backwards so 90 divided by 360 times that answer by 11,745 and then hit equals and then do 255 divided by that answer it's not ideal it'd be better if you did it this way and typed it all in as once that way you don't have to worry about rounding errors but if your calculator doesn't have parentheses that's what you'd want to do if you have parentheses, do it just like I laid it out here.